Well, good morning, and can I extend to you a very happy Christmas. It's great to see you here today at St. Michael's Church. I uh, just wanted to mention what we're going to be doing over the next few, few days and next week. Uh, so tomorrow, which is Boxing Day, unusually it comes on a Sunday, and we're having an, a 10 a.m. family communion here in church. That, that, that will be uh, tomorrow. And the following Sunday, Sunday the 2nd of January, we're just having a church family worship at 10 a.m. So tomorrow and the following Sunday, just 10 a.m. services. And then after that, we get back into a more regular pattern of services. But I've asked the Marsh family to come out and light our Advent candles, all five of them. Uh, the, the final occasion to be lighting Advent candles, so do please come up. And on each of the Sundays in Advent, we remember uh, different people who looked forward to the coming of Jesus. Uh, on the first Sunday, we remembered the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The second Sunday, we thought of the prophets, uh, those great uh, courageous prophets who looked forward to the coming of Messiah. And then we thought about John the Baptist, Roger, Roger told us a bit about John the Baptist. And on the last Sunday, we thought about Mary, Jesus' mother, who in humble obedience accepted the difficult calling that she had. And today, of course, we remember Jesus. Thank you very much indeed. Let's just be quiet for a moment in God's presence before Cyril comes to lead us. Joy of Christmas. <laughs> A very warm welcome to our church on this uh, most joyous of mornings. Um, I looked through the uh, carols that we're singing this morning and I found 27 separate words that uh, are there to lift our spirits and, and give us hope, blessing, care, celebration, jubilation, peace, love, praise, precious, shining, special, wondrous beautiful words and um, you know I, re I re actually remember the uh, when our first um, hymn this morning was written and the first time we ever uh, sung it and at the eight o'clock communion this morning um, Stephen uh, said to us it's such a joyful day it makes you want to throw your hats in the air well I think it almost makes you want to buy a hat so that you can throw them into the air but we're going to sing our first uh, lovely hymn together. Um, but uh, before we do that, uh, a prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. So we start our celebration, our Christmas celebration, with an invitation. Mission Praise 83, come and join our celebration.
God has uh, set the course to glory, but we must play our part by admitting that the babe of Bethlehem is a gift that we don't deserve and can never earn. Instead, we humble ourselves before the child and confess that we need him in order to put our lives right. So please join me on our blue cards, paragraph six. And we'll, we'll use these words to confess that it's our sin that brought Jesus into the world. But give praise that it's his life that brought us real life. So let's say together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Several uh, years ago, I was asked to lead a Christmas service in a country church. And we, we were leaving it a little bit late, so in a hurry I said to my son, Ian, could you grab a present from under the tree so that we could, I could open it up? So there I was up in the pulpit, as you did in those days, and I opened this present in front of everybody, and I held it up, the idiot's guide to using the remote control. That's for everybody. I said, I'll just see if I got something. A bit more pleasant. Have a look. Oh, by the way, last Christmas, I got into a lot of trouble with my two sons because uh, one of their parents, one of their friend's parents, bought everyone in the ch family a Tesla for, for Christmas. Don't expect that this year from me. Oh, Oh, lovely. I do like a check shirt. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, so now this isn't a time just for the children to bring their presents up. So if any of you did get a Tesla for Christmas, you know, rattle your keys, bring them up and show us. But uh, would you like to come up and show us what you've got for Christmas? Well, I've got my present here, oh, lovely. which I haven't yet opened. It's, uh, <laughs> it does feel like a book, so it could be an idiot's guide to something. <laughs> but we'll see. My first present to open this year. Ah, no, it's not an idiot's guide. <laughs> it's a second part. It's called War and Faith. I've been very much enjoying reading War and Grace by Don Stevens, short biographies from the Second World War. So I will very much enjoy that. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> well, it looks so nice to us if you and I are the only two who got Christmas presents this year. <laughs> oh, ah, ah, Elizabeth, yes, yes, do, do come and have a... Come on, let's... Come and show us what you've got. Well, Frank's got something very small. Beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. They're lovely. Oh, and that looks colourful too. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could do we want them for my Christmas. <laughs> right. It's lovely. And uh, this is Josh, our grandson, and he's got a dinosaur. Oh. Yeah. oh. Great. Thank you. <laughs> 
Cyril's giving a quick lesson here in how to, <laughs> how to play with the toys. <laughs> Thank you, Fred. <laughs> yeah, you see, it, it shows the difference in uh, grandchildren's ages, doesn't it? <laughs> and, oh, dear, oh, dear, nobody else got a Christmas. I am sad for you lot. None of you got Christmas presents. Or is it you're all those people who open their Christmas presents after lunch together? Do I see some nods? Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, well, now we have our prayers. Oh, no, sorry, no, we don't. We're going to sing away in the manger. Yes. Oh. Um, a school uh, examiner um, he was going around the school at Christmas time and they had a crib and he asked the children, what is the name of the baby? One little boy's hand shot up and he said, Wayne. He said, well, how did you get Wayne? He said, we've just sung it, Wayne in a manger. <laughs> so that's what we're going to sing now, Away in a Manger, hymn number 47. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the joys of Christmas, for the fun of opening Christmas presents, for the trees and sparkling lights, for parties, for Christmas cakes and pudding. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, most of all, that Jesus was born as a baby on the first Christmas day. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, on this Christmas day, we remember your birth into our world. You came to us with no wealth and no earthly status, but as a helpless and harmless baby with a loving and caring family to help raise you. We thank you for our families, and for those of us who are blessed to spend time as a loving family today, we are truly thankful. For those of us who do not have a loving family, who, who are all alone today, we pray that they, as well as ourselves, be part of your family. Your love binds us together and brings us closer to you. There is no greater thing than to be called your children, 
and no greater gift than your son Jesus. Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, we have come to find you in the stable at Bethlehem. May we love you as Mary loved you. May we serve you as Joseph served you. May we worship you as the angels worshipped you, Jesus our King. Amen. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Amen. Thank you, the Grey Smith family. Uh, we're now going to, well, our service goes out on uh, YouTube, um, and many of us have got used to watching YouTube, and there's lots of good things that uh, you c that can be found on it. And I watched this uh, video that we're going to see uh, on YouTube. It's a Bob Hartman uh, video about the real meaning of Christmas. So I uh, hope that you'll, you'll all see uh, the wonderful purpose of it. It begins in Bethlehem, a nativity run for Christmas time. A woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared, and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What's this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. Please don't scream. God is happy with you, and will bless you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek, and does mighty things for those who are weak, and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on, a quite special baby called Jesus, God's son. The heir of King David will sit on his throne and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. His spirit will come upon you. All night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep, he'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant. What's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore was not his. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful, her love's strong and deep. And the baby is God's own son. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said, so keep your engagement, be glad, and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. One hump, two humps. The star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star away in the west, the way off far. A king's been born, that's what it means, a Judea way, or so it seems. They climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. At last their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. O oh, king, they asked. They were quite polite. Somewhere around here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? Star Watch's friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do, so the Star Watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy space. And when they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys. Presents, rather, fit for a king. A bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelling frankincense filled the room. Then in the night, they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. 
One hump, two humps, a lumpity lump. The Star Watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, a lumpity lump. The Star Watchers followed the star. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell to the children to celebrate Christmas Day? It's not just a story. It's not just for kids. It's the hinge on which history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate, that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross, he died for us all, died to take all our wrongs away, and walked three days later right out of his tomb to turn death's dark night to day. And that is the good news the angels proclaimed, the heart of all Jesus would do. A new life for now, a new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. In a little while, Hope will come and bring our Bible reading, and then uh, Nigel will share uh, the Lord's Word with us. Uh, but our next carol starts with the word joy. Carol number 394. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. It's full of the Christmas promise and has been sung in churches for over 300 years. So let's join with that uh, choir of the centuries and sing this uh, this wonderful hymn with all our hearts. 393, Joy to the World, the Lord has come. Our Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, and can be found on page 1032 of the Pew Bibles. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. The birth of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. 
And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Hope. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for the amazing circumstances around your human birth. And thank you that you are still our Saviour and our King. Help us to know more of that today. Amen. Well, I've got some actions for you to join in with today. There's four actions. I'll show you them first, and we can have a go at them. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, go, go through what I want to say, and we'll fit the actions in. So the first one is king, so crown, okay? And that kind of does for Roman emperors, governors, and governments, and anyone who's generally pretty important. And the second one, because they're important, is order. So it's kind of, okay, order. Uh, the third one is working. Well, Joseph was a carpenter, so you take hold of the wood with one hand, lean into it, and a bit of sawing going on, okay? And the last one is very easy, it's baby, cradling the baby. Okay. So Caesar Augustus was the king. Cyril was ahead of me. <laughs> he was the Roman emperor, and we're told that Quirinius was governor of Syria. Now, Caesar gave an order that everyone should go back to his hometown to be registered. Now, Joseph was a carpenter. And he lived in Nazareth. Nazareth was about 70 miles from Bethlehem, his hometown. But Joseph had to go to Bethlehem because Caesar had ordered it. So Joseph went to Bethlehem with Mary, who was expecting a baby. And we're told that the time came for Mary to have her baby. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, for many of us, this, this Christmas is our second rather unusual Christmas, perhaps an unexpected Christmas. It might be, for some of you, it's a quieter Christmas than usual, perhaps very quiet. And I know that for some people, some people aren't here because they're having to self-isolate at this stage. That first Christmas for Joseph and Mary and Jesus was a very unexpected and unusual Christmas. They had the 70-mile journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem with Mary expecting a baby very soon. Mary gave birth to Jesus in very unhygienic circumstances, probably in a stable, because there's no room for them even to be in, in an inn, in a guest house. And then later on, when King Herod heard that the future king of the Jews was born. He tried to kill Jesus and killed lots of young boys. God sent his son Jesus in poor and dangerous circumstances out of love for us. Because Jesus the the baby, as we saw on the video, Jesus the baby grew to be Jesus the man, the most amazing man who ever lived. He taught as no one had ever taught. He healed people. He even raised some people from death. And then at the end, he died a painful and public death. And the Bible tells us why he did this, because Jesus' name means saviour, because Jesus would save the people from their sins. Our sins, the wrong things that we do, put a barrier between us and God. 
and yet Jesus' death was to pay the price for our sin so that when we say sorry, God forgives us and puts us in a right relationship with him. And that's the real message of Christmas. Life can be hard for us in all sorts of different ways and particularly hard in a pandemic. But Jesus promises to be with us always, to be our friend and saviour if we want him to be. So as I finish, let me ask you these questions and do please join in with the actions. After Christmas, will our government be ordering us to lock down? Will we be able to get back to work or school? But most importantly, will we remember Jesus who came as a baby but was really the king? There was no room for Jesus in the inn. Will there be room for Jesus in our lives? Now, if you'd like to know more about having Jesus in your life, let me suggest a few things. Uh, we've been giving out our Christmas services two books. And if you haven't got a copy, then do please get one as you go. For the children, this, this uh, really great book called The King and the Shepherd Boy, a lovely poem. Uh, and uh, for the adults, this book called Four Kinds of Christmas, Glenn Scrivener talking about four ways that we might respond to the Christmas message. And if you want to find out more, for children and young people, every Sunday at 10 o'clock we have something. Uh, first Sunday is normally a family service, and other Sundays we have junior church over in church house. Uh, and for adults, in addition to our services, we're running uh, a course called Essentials in mid to late January. And it looks at the heart of the Christian message. Uh, there's some short talks by Lee McMahon, uh, and then the chance for discussion and questions. Uh, we're going to be, re be running it on three Mondays uh, in, in mid to late January, uh, and we'll decide a bit nearer the time whether it's going to be in person or on Zoom. But do please speak to Joe or me if you're interested in, in joining us for Essentials. But let, let's just pray together now. Our loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you sent Jesus as a tiny baby but that he grew to be a man and grew to die on the cross to pay the price for our sins and then to rise to life. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who wants to come and live in each of our lives. Lord, I pray today that we'll have a really good Christmas, but more than that, that for us there will be room for Jesus in our lives. Because in his name we pray. Amen. Our closing carol is uh, a wonderful carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, which has that great verse. In fact, I'm not sure which number it is. 503 in the books. It has that great verse, O Holy Child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Number 503 in the books.
Do please sit down. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Christmas. Thank you for the fun that we enjoy together. But thank you especially for Jesus. Your, your gift, your perfect gift to us. That first Christmas. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.